Welcome. In this section, we will learn how to solve first order linear homogeneous constant coefficient systems of ODEs using the eigenvalue method. This introductory lesson will focus on determining the eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors of a matrix. Suppose we have a system represented by the vector equation x prime equals p times x, where p is the constant matrix and x and x prime are vectored valued functions. We wish to adapt the method for the single constant coefficient equation by trying the function e to the lambda t. However, x is now a vector, so we try vector x equals vector v times e to the lambda t. Times e to the lambda t, where vector v is an arbitrary constant vector. We plug x and x prime into the differential equation, where x prime is really x prime of t. To find x prime of t, we do have to apply the chain rule which on the left gives us lambda times vector v times e to the lambda t equals p times vector v times e to the lambda t. Dividing both sides by e to the lambda t, we get the equation below lambda times vector v equals p times vector v, which in the case we're looking for a scalar lambda and a vector v that satisfies the equation. To solve this equation, we need to review some linear algebra. Let a be a constant square matrix and suppose there is a scalar lambda and a non-zero vector v such that matrix A times vector v equals lambda times vector v. We call lambda an eigenvalue of matrix A and we call vector v a corresponding eigenvector. As an example, given the two by two matrix that has an eigenvalue of two and a corresponding eigenvector of one zero, notice the given matrix, which we'll call matrix A, times the eigenvector of one zero is equal to the vector two zero, which is equal to two times the vector one zero, where two is lambda, the eigenvalue, and the vector one zero is the corresponding eigenvector. And now see how we determine eigenvalues for any square matrix. We begin with the equation matrix A times vector V equals lambda times vector V, and write it in the form shown here on the right, where we have the difference of A and lambda I times vector V equals the zero vector. This equation has a non-zero solution vector v only if the difference of a and lambda i is not invertible. If it were invertible, we could multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse of the difference of a and lambda i, which would imply that vector v is equal to the zero vector. Therefore, matrix A has the eigenvalue lambda if and only if lambda solves the equation the determinant of the difference of a and lambda i equals zero. Recall if this difference is zero, then a minus lambda i doesn't have an inverse and is not invertible. Consequently, we can find an eigenvalue of matrix A without finding a corresponding eigenvector at the same time. An eigenvector will be found later once we determine, once we determine lambda, the eigenvalue. And now let's determine the eigenvalues of the given three by three matrix. Notice this will be the first step in solving the system represented by x prime equals the given three by three matrix times vector x. To find the eigenvalues, again, we find the determinant of the difference of a and lambda i, set it equal to zero, and solve for lambda. I've already set this up below. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we have the determinant of the three by three matrix equals zero. To find the determinant, we use expansion by minors. Using the third row would be easiest because there are two zero entries in row three. Notice the determinant would be equal to the entry in row three, column three, which is two minus lambda, times the determinant of the matrix remaining after eliminating row three and column three. Notice the determinant of the remaining two by two matrix is two minus lambda times itself minus one times one, or just minus one, shown below. Simplifying and factoring, we have negative lambda minus one times lambda minus two minus lambda minus three equals zero, which gives us lambda equals one, lambda equals two, and lambda equals three for the eigenvalues. For an n by n matrix, the polynomial we get by computing the determinant of the difference of a and lambda i is of degree n, and hence in general we have n eigenvalues. However, some may be repeated and some may be complex. To find an eigenvector corresponding to an eigenvalue lambda, we write the difference of a and lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector and solve for the non-trivial vector v, which will be an eigenvector. If lambda is an eigenvalue, then there will be at least one free variable, and for each distinct eigenvalue lambda, we can always find an eigenvector. So going back to the previous three by three matrix, 
let's find an eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue lambda equals three. To do this again, we set up the equation shown here above. We have the difference of the given three by three matrix and lambda times i times vector v equals a zero vector. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we have the three by three matrix with entries negative one, 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 negative one, zero, and zero, zero, negative one times vector v equals the zero vector. And now we need to solve for vector v. To do this, we can write the corresponding augmented matrix shown here on the right, and then write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which I've already done here below. Notice the first row indicates v1 minus v2 equals zero. The second row indicates v3 equals zero. The third row is a row of zeros indicating we have an infinite number of solutions. Also notice v2 is a free variable. The first equation also indicates that v1 equals v2, and of course v3 equals zero. So if we pick v1 equals one, v1 and v2 are both one, and v3 is equal to zero, giving us vector v is the vector one, one, zero, which is a corresponding eigenvector to the eigenvalue lambda equals three. And let's go ahead and check this by checking to make sure the given three by three matrix times the eigenvector equals the eigenvalue times the eigenvector. This gives us the given three by three matrix times the vector one, one, zero, which is equal to the vector three, three, zero, which can be written as three times the vector one, one, zero. Notice three is the eigenvalue, and the vector one, one, zero is a corresponding eigenvector. The general procedure for solving these types of systems of ODEs using the eigenvalue method will be to find the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. However, remember, there are three possibilities when determining eigenvalues. We can have distinct real eigenvalues, we can have complex eigenvalues, we can also have repeated eigenvalues. The types of eigenvalues we have will affect how we express the general solution. I hope you found this introduction helpful.